What's up, bro? Dude, you don't know how close I was to shooting you right there. You can't sneak up on me like that. Apparently I can, which makes you a bad hunter. Also, why the hell are you yelling? Are you trying to shoot nothing today? Don't worry, bro Obama. This land isn't pressured like most of the public land you'll find. I'm sure we'll get into them. Well, I've never hunted in Texas. What can we expect? George's ranch is basically heaven for hunting. We got some nice hills and oak woods, which is a great change of pace for Texas, being nearly all fields and scarce cover. There's tons of trees and thickets around here. That paired with the sheer volume of big game makes this place like easy mode. I've been hunting a few times up near Chicago, freezing my ass off. I'm glad I don't have to fight weather conditions this time around. We got lucky. Usually it's the opposite around here. Sometimes you can't even hunt the mid-afternoon window because it's like a hundred fucking degrees. Me personally, I'd rather sweat than freeze. Have you had success out here? You bet. George will put you on to some deer big time. I remember last year, I had a hunt with him and Rogan, and we each got a buck in like two hours just back to back to back. Sounds good to me. What are the targets? White tails, of course, but George has these crazy Axis deer stock, too. Not to mention the infestation. Yeah. You're talking about the hogs? You already know. It's kill on sight for those things. Bro, bro, 12 o'clock. I see a deer right now. Yeah, I see it. It's a white tail, about 70 yards. What? We looking at a buck? No, no. Looks like a doe. You want to take it? Eh, I don't think so. I want a buck. I don't like to shoot does. Don't be a pussy. They are just as delicious, and you can still kill a buck for the trophy later on. I'm all set, bro. Go ahead and take the dough if you have the heart. All right, man. I'll just kill your deer for you then. Hi, Donnie! <laughs> Fuck, Sleepy, you just cost me a kill. Oh, did I? My bad, buddy. Hey, Joe. What's up, brother? Are we gonna get some bucks today? We should, but now that you're here, it hurts our odds. Bro, I can out-hunt you easily. I've been hunting since I was a kid. Did you shoot dinosaurs back then? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Well, now that we're all out here, where is our guide? Bushy boy put his GPS ping on this exact location. He must be pretty close. Closer than you think, Donnie. Ah! Joe, it's fucking me. Also, how did you just miss me from point blank range? Oh, hi, George. I thought you were a big old boar. How? I was literally talking. God, this is going to be like the time I invited Dick Cheney out here. Why are you a guy named Bush cosplaying as a bush? This is the Bushwalker, a modified mobile hunting hide. I made it all myself. You for sure got this idea from Fortnite. Shut up. It gets the job done. I've got so close to a buck with this thing, I could count the ticks on his ass. Really nice area, George. I'm glad to be back on the ranch. Spot any nice ones this week? I did see a few of those nice Axis bucks rolling through. This is the spot right here with the wind in our faces on this high ground. The deer don't know we're here until we have them broadside down this little gully. It's over, Anakin. We have the high ground. Anything big out here? There's trophy axis deer around. Don't you worry. This is also the time of year where all the big white tails come in from the public lands to escape the Texan population. Against my wife's best wishes, I'm looking for my trophy buck to hang in my study and game room. I want to congratulate you for standing up to her, but I also want to call you a bitch for your wife dictating what you have in your only room in the entire mansion. I don't blame you. I, I've only ever been able to keep the antlers and the meat since I got married to Joe Biden. You are Joe. You're married to Jill. Damn it. I thought I was married to the president. We can give this spot a try for a couple hours, really. What do you guys want to do in the meantime? Since we're out here, I figured we should do a hunting tier list. You're darn tootin' and deer shootin'. That's a great way to pass the time waiting on these bucks to pop up. All right, Barack, I'm sure you have a list put together. Where do we start? Well, let's just start from the bottom of the food chain and work our way up. Much like many hunters do. I should hope so. I think we'd have a real problem if people just woke up and decided, you know what, I'm gonna go kill a moose today. That reminds me. I've decided for certain lists as in-depth as this one, we discuss categories to base our ranking on. That's a good idea. Joe is used to much more structured conversation. Wouldn't want him to get lost. Now you can put the whole tier list on a flashcard. Can you actually do that for real? I'll have one of your aides give you lists in advance. Appreciate it. So what categories are we discussing for each target species? I have considered four measurable categories for why you would want to target any particular species. There may be other things to consider outside of these four categories, but we can discuss that individually. Yeah, 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 mumbo jumbo, lay it on us. The categories are yield, sport, expenses, and effort. Pretty straightforward. So yield is what meat you get out of it? I'm considering anything you can harvest from the animal, whether that's meat, pelts, or any trophies you can take home to count towards overall yield. Cool. 
So sport is just how fun it is to hunt? Yes, but this can mean a number of things, mainly having to do with the difficulty of actually killing the animal in question. So the easier it is, the better score for this? Not necessarily. There's a nuance to this category that every hunter must wrestle with. It's actually more fun the more difficult a hunt is up to a point. I get what you're saying. If it was all easy, then it wouldn't be such an accomplishment when you finally get the kill. On the other hand, hunting isn't just more fun the harder it gets. There are some hunts in some places that are just no fun at all, let me tell you. I don't know, man. If I could kill a deer faster than going to the grocery store, then I, I'd be pretty stoked. It's cool to have days like that, but it can get tough on any day in any spot. That's what makes it fun. It's also about countering the intelligence and evasiveness of an animal in its own environment. That's not an easy task for someone like Joe when the deer might actually be smarter than he is. If they're so smart, why do I keep killing them? Picks or it didn't happen. We had all that shit erased from existence for political reasons. Bullshit! You two libtards couldn't hit the broadside of Chris Christie's ass. The fact that you missed me from point blank range makes me believe Donnie at this point. I'll show you a hunter. Please tell me you didn't bring your son. Like I was saying, sport is a very debatable topic, but the last two aren't. Maybe normal people would have to worry about expenses, not me. This list is about the people, Donnie. This isn't the cheapest hobby to get into. Yeah, rifles ain't cheap nowadays. Thanks, Joe. People can't even afford to hunt for their dinner anymore. And this was the only food source that hasn't been fucked over by shrinkflation. Not my fault. Big snack companies are to blame for selling air. Well, hunting is at an all-time low thanks to good old societal pressure, so there's more opportunity than ever to start now. All thanks to the goddamn liberal media making us softer by the day. Y'all young people need to learn the ways of the wild and harvest your own food for once in your digital lives. That's right. Hunting is, to my surprise, the most humane way of harvesting meat if done properly. It's no surprise when you really think about it. The animal gets to live a natural life and gets lucky enough for a very quick death compared to the common natural ways of dying, like by infection or starvation. Humans also generally get the job done faster and more precisely than all other predators. That's probably why so many deer run right out onto the freeway, one second away from sweet bliss. Roadkill doesn't count as hunting. It counts as meals on wheels. Roadkill would be the lowest effort possible since I'm counting effort as all hoops you must jump through in order to get the animal down and back home. This may include things like scouting, experience with certain weapons, travel, butchering, or even the need to train a hunting dog. I'll tell you, Commander is the best hunting dog. Can't argue with that. He even hunts people when I want him to. All right, we got these categories down. Let the ranking begin. We're starting small, right? Look no further than Donnie's hands. You're so far into dementia that I truly don't know if you're jerking me off or if you're serious. Who's this orange dude? He's fucking with you. Let's start with the rodents. I remember when Pops took me out here looking for squirrels on my first hunt. That's what I have first on the list as well. Squirrels and chipmunks are some of the most widespread animals in the US. They are definitely S tier on the effort front. Anywhere there's trees, there's bound to be squirrels, so they're probably the easiest animal to find. True that. Whether it's the red squirrel, the gray squirrel, or the fox squirrel, you don't have to walk two feet into the wilderness to have a chance at them. I could take down a nice-sized squirrel, but I don't have the heart to put a hole through a chipmunk. They are pretty small usually, but so are squirrels. So why do chipmunks get a pass from you? Alvin and the chipmunks. They were the boys. It's a cartoon, bro. I hear their angelic voices now. Please take one of the yellow pills, Joe. Okie dokie. It's looking pretty weak in the yield department for the squirrels. Facts, if you go hunting and come back with one squirrel, you're definitely stopping at McDonald's on the way home. Well, you're probably gonna do that anyway. McFuck off. Not like the tiny pelt is worth much either. You can keep the tails to make fly fishing lures though. Nice resourcefulness, George. What about the meat? Meat's pretty all right. I like a nice squirrel chili. I just pan fry them in oil. Pretty much tastes like chicken, but they have a hint of whatever nuts they've been munching on. These nuts. Quiet. You can get a decent amount of meat from a big gray squirrel, but even that is no more than a light meal for one. You're gonna need to kill a few to feed more than one person. That's right, I'd go D tier on the yield. Same, what about sport? You are able to casually walk around the woods and pick these things off trees pretty good. Not the most exciting hunt, but it's not super easy either. You have to be quick if you wanna catch them before they make their way into a tree hole. I wouldn't recommend shooting at a moving target. Just wait till the squirrel stops to look at you and take them out. How to tell me you're not a quail hunter without telling me you're not a quail hunter? You're just gonna end up shooting the thing in the leg and condemning it to a slow death. Uh, not if you're accurate and or firing a 12 gauge. 
Doesn't a 12 gauge seem like overkill? Nonsense. A trusty 12 gauge shotgun is what I use for anything the size of a turkey and under. At the end of the day, if you have a favorite type of gun, then that's what you should be using before I take them all away. For sport, I'm thinking B because you can either look for natural bait like nuts and wait for one or more likely walk from tree to tree. It's not hard at all, but it's not too easy. I'm inclined to agree. These nuts. OK, what about expenses? It really costs next to nothing at the low end to hunt for squirrels. As little as a BB gun or an air rifle can consistently kill them. That's going to be as cheap as it gets as far as equipment. You don't really even need camo either. Just dark colors or anything that matches your surroundings will suffice. I personally think you look silly if you go out into the woods fully kitted up like an elk hunter and you're just looking for squirrels. Do you even need a hunting license for squirrels? You generally need a hunting license for all game big or small on public lands. This is factored into every single target on the list for expenses. But some fees are worse than others between states. There are basically no rules for the common gray or red squirrel on private land in a lot of states. Most types of squirrels are considered pests and can be treated as such on your property. Well, unless you have a ranch like this, most people don't have access to a large squirrel population, mostly just one or two in their backyard. Regardless, it's one of the easier limits to bag in most places. Well, it sounds like a squirrel tier for expenses. Yeah, it can be more expensive if you want to be more successful. Use a 22 caliber rifle or a 12 gauge and maybe even bring a hunting dog to scare them out of their holes and you'll be surprised at the amount of squirrels you can pull in succession. As far as effort, squirrels are high tier as well. Randomly walking around the woods for short periods of time is something anyone can do. S tier on effort. Negligible travel time because of widespread availability makes squirrels one of the easiest game to find across the country. I fully agree with that. The second you leave your car, you're squirrel hunting. It's easier than most to skin this one as well. Good call, Joe. Processing the animal can be a ton of effort as it gets larger. Gutting them is easy, and it's pretty much the same as any animal. Try to open it up lengthwise without puncturing the organs and then drag the guts out. You do not want to get stomach juices or any shit on the meat. You'll need to toss it. You also got to gut animals as fast as possible because the warmth of the body combined with the entrails can spoil the meat faster, especially if it's hot, like around here. Good general butchering tips. What's the final verdict on squirrels and I guess chipmunks to a lesser extent? I'm not shooting chipmunks, but S tier for squirrels. You're higher than the squirrels in the trees if you think they're S tier. Yeah, I'm not low on them, but I don't think they make it into the high tiers. It's just so weak to get only one squirrel since the yield is lacking, and sometimes you do only get one since squirrels don't bunch up too much. That'll be good to factor into species later on the list. So are we B tier? B tier is a good spot for them. Not low, but nothing life-changing about a squirrel hunt. That's acceptable, but I'd be lower on them because they throw nuts at me when I'm hunting for a respectable animal. What about the meat? I feel like there should be another category for how they taste. We can factor meat quality into the yield. Even though it's good meat, the lack of volume you get from a single animal is not helping it out of D tier. Fine, I'll enjoy my squirrel chili alone. What's next? Let's move up to rabbits. Hold your horses, Obama. I'm hijacking this list for a public service announcement. Rats are absolutely taking over New York City. If only the mafia was still in power, they were really good at killing rats. I'm talking about real motherfucking rats. They're everywhere. New York specifically has a real problem because the rats that are there have doubled in size in 10 years. I totally agree with your message, Donnie. Chicago's infestation has become even bigger than New York's, if you can believe that. I don't really consider rats to be a hunting animal, though. This isn't an extermination tier list. We can do that in the future, but he's got a point. The categories for this are easy. Let's just put it on the list. Here, I'll do it all for you. Yield and sport are both F tier on them because you won't want anything from the rat, and it's generally not very fun to kill them. I actually disagree with you there. Get an air rifle with some night vision and you'll be having a good time. Okay, fine. Maybe D tier on sport, but buying a whole air rifle set up with fucking night vision is practically psychotic and hurts the cost, which is virtually nothing besides traps or a BB gun. You can even get the job done with a good old rat bashing stick. The best way to take out rats is to poison their dens with carbon monoxide, which New York has done to great effect, but the second best way to get a bunch of them is to get a few dogs together. It's a thousand times easier to train a dog to kill rats than to train a dog to hunt absolutely anything else. There's a lot of good breeds for ratting. Rat terriers, Jack Russells, even Yorkies can be rat demons. Larger dog breeds work just as well. 
I also wouldn't suggest hunting rats in New York with a dog under 10 pounds unless you wanted to lose some of those fights. It's like playing Pokemon at that point. The one big drawback is effort. I don't think anyone wants to spend hours killing hordes of rats and not get paid for it. Plus, if you did it alone in a big city at night, you're bound to get robbed or stabbed and shot and robbed. Your dog probably gets stabbed too. It's dog eat dog out here in these streets. Yeah, F tier on effort. Well, at least expenses is S tier. Some categories outweigh others in some scenarios, for sure. If it's F tier in both yield and effort, it's gonna be F tier overall. But you are a saint if you fight the good fight against the infestation. Plus, if you feel like killing, you can kill as many as you want. That's fucked up, bro. They would score higher on the extermination tier list, but F tier is good on this one. Okay, let's actually do rabbits this time. Oh, I love me some rabbit stew. Meat quality will be a bonus in the yield ranking despite the lack of protein. I too am fond of many rabbit and hair dishes. Usually if I find a hair on my plate, I send it back. He's talking about hair like the big rabbit moron. Any cottontails or jackrabbits around here? There's an army of them on the other side of the property near the wheat fields. You're growing more than wheat over in those fields, George? Alfalfa for the buck. I only buy lab wheat nowadays. That's understandable. So it's good meat and the pelt is pretty cool, so I'd be around B tier for yield considering how small the animals are. Probably C tier because just getting one rabbit is basically close to getting skunked in my eyes. I'm with Donnie. A jackrabbit can make a meal for one if it's big, but the cottontail tastes better despite being smaller. You want to get two or three before you start getting comfortable. The rabbit's range is nearly the whole country, but that's mainly because of the cottontail. Jackrabbits are a little more sparse. What about sport, George? I know you've probably killed hundreds with your Elmer Fudd looking ass. I'll tell you what, it's a very underrated hunt, especially if you can get a few people with you sweeping the brush. Doesn't hurt to have a dog either. It is when they're new at hunting rabbit. I can't count how many times I've had to fight my dog for my rabbit. I've always been afraid to hit my dog by accident. You know, that's a really fair worry to have when you're using a 12 gauge or other shotguns, which is my preferred method. But you just need to be very aware of your surroundings when hunting for things that are quick, like game birds and rabbits. I think Commander can tank some bird shot. I can test that theory if you want. It would be unadvised. Commander has his own K-9 Secret Service. They all have little Secret Service jackets on. It's adorable. I'm kidding. I don't shoot animals that aren't delicious. Like I was saying, rabbit hunting is underrated and very enjoyable, even for younger folks. You've got to be quick on the draw, but you might get multiple shots just because rabbits tend to stick together at times. I'd rate the sport of the rabbit at A tier. It is definitely fun to scramble a bunch of rabbits out of the underbrush and into the open for a shot at them. That's my problem with a rabbit hunt. In order to spook them out, you need to get balls deep in the underbrush to push them into open areas. And that's why I never go on a rabbit hunt without a good hunting dog. Although unnecessary, a dog is a game changer to flush the rabbits from the brush. Would you say that hurts the rabbits in the effort department? Yes, but I still wouldn't consider rabbits to be a hard hunt. Maybe you need to train a dog and buy a nice shotgun, but the hunting portion of this is pretty easy. That tells me you've never been rabbit hunting without a dog. It's a pain in the ass to get through the underbrush by yourself to get to them. That's fair, but there's plenty to be found on the edges of undergrowth and even in open fields. I'm sticking to A tier on effort and sport. Shotguns are really expensive and dogs can be too, so I'd say this is a much more costly venture than a squirrel hunt. Sounds like a B or C tier on expenses. Uh, let's go B tier with it since it's just the main weapon that jacks the price up. No travel costs since rabbits are so widely available. I can agree with that. Final verdict on the rabbit? More upsides than downsides. I'd say rabbit are easily a tier higher than their bushy-tailed cousins. I agree with A tier. I almost want to put them in S tier because of the potential for multiple hunters to be successful working as a team. It's always more fun that way. The camaraderie of a hunting party after a successful day is unlocking primordial levels of friendship. I used to have a bunch of bunny buddies way back when. Where did they go? Most of them died years ago, but I still hold those memories dear to my heart. Must have been powerful memories to survive this much drug-induced Alzheimer's. No doubt. All right, what's next? I was thinking we cover small canines like foxes and coyotes. I've never killed a fox before, but the local Yotes have felt my wrath. Not your typical game. Maybe you kill a coyote out of necessity, but certainly not for eating. Plenty of people eat them, and half of them turn out to be perfectly sane. That's disgusting. Who would eat a puppy? I'm also pretty apprehensive. People saying it's got a bad taste, but they usually don't cook it right. It's tough stuff, so people cook the shit out of it. The best way to eat a coyote is ground meat stuff like meatballs and burgers. So what's it taste like? 
similar to lamb, but it's its own taste for sure. Lamb chops are goaded. I kind of want to try dog, and I might be down to shoot Commander now. No! If you can avoid the possible PR shitstorm from eating coyotes, it's worth a try. So you seriously ate a coyote? I had spaghetti and coyote balls one time, and it was fine. Nothing crazy, but not the worst meatballs I've had. I also had one of my close friends with me who does wild game cooking very well. This motherfucker ate coyote balls. That blows my mind. Don't knock it till you try it. All right, well, where would you put the yield in that case? It may not be bad meat in some circumstances, but it's not versatile either. The pelt can be pretty nice, and even the skulls are fun to keep if you're into that, but that's about it. I'd say pretty mid. It's a lot higher than I would put it. I don't care for the pelt or the meat. As far as sport, I've never personally gone after them. They just come to me because I got chickens, and that's when either myself or my mastiff will dispatch them. I told you, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out here. I guess that means the effort is pretty high tier since it's easy to locate them by finding or presenting a food source. It's also super easy to locate coyotes by just howling or even using predator calls to get them to come to you. I'd go B tier sport and A tier for effort. I would have never expected stats that high. What about expenses? A 22 will do. That's right. Even a high-powered air rifle gets the job done. Additionally, there's little to no restrictions on coyotes. In most places, you don't even need a hunting license to target them. That's S tier by past standards. Pretty good stats. Where do they fall on the list? I was at C tier before talking about them, but I'm starting to realize the only big issue with them is the stigma of hunting canines. I feel like it's a fair ick to have. They are kind of cute, and foxes are even cuter. That makes pulling the trigger kind of difficult for me. Stop being a pussy. We put rabbits in A tier and they're adorable. I agree. I'd be fine with B tier. Seems pretty controversial to put them that high. Why? It's not like they worry about how cute our dogs and cats are before they rip them to shreds. That's a good point, but I'm not putting them above mid tier. Definitely humanely dispatch them if they become a threat to your pets or livestock. Yeah, I'm walking down any Yodi that thinks it can eat a member of my family. Biden is probably shooting blanks and nobody's told him yet. Oh yeah? Well, your gun probably shoots Big Macs. That's the best idea you've had in your whole presidency. What's next? What about wolves? I'm not really in favor of hunting wolves at all. Oh, come on. We just got into killing coyotes, which are just small wolves. Wolves are a very different case. This has been the subject of much debate during our presidencies. In my time, I had them under the Endangered Species Act in most parts of the country. When I took over, I overturned all that. It was time to start hunting them again. Why, though? And don't say cattle farmers. They take up enough land for the natives to take a piece. Well, to put it simply, wolves aren't endangered anymore. Their population is strong, and they aren't going anywhere. It's true that they've made a major comeback from being nearly eradicated, but they still don't have anywhere near the numbers they once had. Bottom line is, wolves are extremely beneficial to any ecosystem. They eat the old and sick animals, making it easier on the rest of the population. Well, they aren't beneficial for human hunters. Anywhere there's wolves means any elk, deer, or moose will be twice as skittish and elusive. Therein lies the struggle of the wolf. They are threatened by hunters that don't treat them with respect. At the least, elk and deer hunters will quietly push toward any legislation that includes strict population control, and at the worst, maniacs will use cruel and unusual methods like running wolves over with trucks or setting wolf dens on fire with pups inside. All this to get a better chance at a deer. Okay, well, I don't think the vast majority of hunters would do something so dastardly as setting wildlife on fire, but it's fair to say that a healthy population is to be maintained in order to avoid conflict with people. Now, I don't really see wolves as a threat to humans. Uh, there's been only two confirmed cases of wolves killing people in North America as far back as records go. Like that movie with Liam Neeson? What about cattle farmers? And there it is. He's worried about burger prices. Shut up. I've heard they have the most to lose when governments introduce wolves to new areas. I'm seriously unfazed by those concerns when you look at the numbers. Yes, wolves will kill cattle, but with the numbers of cattle being killed by wolves against the number of wolves that have been killed in defense of cattle, it's virtually one-sided against the wolf. Any more estrogen-fueled complaints? Yes, in fact, I do. It is irresponsible to allow normal citizens who know nothing about the social structure of wolves to kill them at will. You can do terribly destructive things to a pack of wolves by killing even one member of the pack. Smaller packs can't feed each other as effectively or take on as big of prey 
with even one member missing. Additionally, you can mess up the hierarchy of the pack if you killed an alpha, which is highly possible if you're trophy hunting. I understand your point, Brobama. Wolves play a big part in the ecosystem, and one man with a rifle can impact that role negatively. I would also say that wolves shouldn't be given special treatment just because they have a social structure. After all, they will overcome losses just like they do in cases of natural death. Fair enough, but where we're at now is bad for wolves everywhere except maybe Alaska. And I advise restraint for any hunter thinking about targeting them. Not like too many hunters are targeting wolves anyway. It's much harder to find them than any other member on the list so far. It seems like a lot of hullabaloo. You gotta shoot the wolves before they ambush you on the way to grandma's house. Fairy tales are the only places you can find wolves acting like monsters. Enough of this liberal narrative. We can count our grievances in the final ranking. Where are we at with the stats? Looking at coyotes as an example, wolves are a downgrade in everything but yield. Wolves are the same as coyotes, but just much larger. The pelt is worth a lot more, and the meat is not particularly good or bad. Just keep in mind that wolves target the sick animals for prey, so they have a higher chance to carry disease. That goes for all predators. That's why Sleepy has so many pills to take. Eat a dick, Donald. I bet you carry plenty of McDonald's-related diseases. I would be at B tier for yield. As far as the hunt goes, it's really not worth the effort to travel in order to hunt wolves, which in most cases you'll need to. Even if you live in a place with a lot of wolves like Minnesota or Montana, it's tough to find them since they're so elusive. Uh, sounds like a ton of effort for a shitty hunt that will make people like Barack cry if you put it on social media. I'll probably just harass you in the comment section. I think wolves are mid for sport and expenses, but D tier for effort. It's looking like wolves are pretty mid. Now I will argue that they should be even lower because of the war waged on wolves across this country. And also for the shitstorm, I will personally drop on you for killing wolves. Kill the wolves where they aren't endangered. Who gives a shit? I'd be okay to go down to D tier to protect the wild puppies. Say maybe it's worth it for some completionist hunters trying to get one of each big game animals in the US, but it's not worth it in my book. Fine, D tier is okay for them. We should do birds next. That's fine, but there's a wacky one I'd like to go over first. Invasive reptiles. What, are illegal animals coming over the border to live the American dream? No, I'm talking about the Everglades. Mainly the Burmese python and green iguana. They've become a real problem for the ecosystem in Florida. That reminds me, when are we doing the reptile list? Pretty soon, we gotta do some more Pokemon D&D &D first. Jebediah is my homeboy. MAGA clears. So what's the point of hunting snakes in the middle of a swamp? Pythons have ravaged the local wildlife. I'm talking no raccoons or anything out there anymore. Well, I'm not wrestling a 20-foot python in mosquito heaven for no reason. What's the appeal of catching illegal reptiles? The appeal is a bounty system ran by Florida Fish and Wildlife. You can apply to be a state employee that is fully paid to remove pythons. You get $13 to $18 an hour and additional bounties for each python paid by the length. This also extends to the green iguana, which pays five to $10 per iguana. Sounds like being a real crocodile Dundee. The only thing is, not everyone gets accepted and you kinda gotta already live in South Florida to make it manageable. If you wanna live in Florida just to make a living hunting pythons, then this seems like a good option for you. Upside is, it costs next to nothing to hunt pythons besides a car and maybe just an air rifle to get iguanas. That's S tier on expenses for sure. Right, but there's nothing easy about pulling big snakes out of a swamp. There's this dude on YouTube called Python Cowboy, who I watch catch these things and it looks pretty tough. The Burmese python is nothing to fuck with. They have multiple rows of needle sharp teeth and on top of that, their whole body is practically one giant muscle. It is fairly dangerous to handle them as they get larger. You need good positioning on the grab to the back of their heads or you might get bit while they coil you. Wait, why can't you just shoot them? It's perfectly legal to shoot them in the wild, but it's not effective whatsoever. The only way to kill them with a gun is to shoot them directly in the brain, and that's way harder than it sounds with the thing thrashing around and because of how small their brains are to begin with. Pythons follow zombie rules? Pretty much, you can pump your whole magazine into this thing's body and it's not gonna stop them. I bet no one's tried with a 50 BMG. That makes hunting them a ton of effort. You gotta be trained by Bear Grylls and Steve Irwin in order to cull these without serious risks. 
Yeah, I'm not trying to wrestle giant snakes into submission. I seen Anaconda and that thing almost killed Ice Cube. Well, that's a movie. Real pythons are not nearly as agile, but still plenty strong and deadly in the right circumstances. Probably D tier on effort, huh? Yeah, I think so, but sports got to be high tier because it's the only animal on the list that you don't use weapons on. It's just you against the beast. Very primal, I almost want to try it. I really want to see you try it. I'd go A tier on sport. I guess, what about yield? Specifically, how's the taste? You can technically eat them, but it's nothing special for taste or texture. And on top of that, python meat has high amounts of toxic metals like mercury. So I would advise against eating it. The snake skin can be used to make boots, bags, and belts, but I don't vibe with the aesthetic. Well, if green iguanas are truly lumped in here, then we have to consider their delicious meat as well. Yeah, I've actually tried iguana in Costa Rica, and it was pretty baller. Okay, so python bad, iguana good. What the hell do we rank this? I say we go B tier, since you can get some pretty cool stuff from them, even if it's not always the meat. Good for me. Where do we rank these scaly illegals? Seems like more of a public service than a recreational activity. They're feeling pretty mid to me. It's a great cause to try and remove them and help local wildlife. But the sheer amount of effort and danger you go through to hunt them makes it too risky for a vast majority of the population. Definitely not something you can just start hunting with no experience or athletic capability. C tier is good to go. All right, let's get these birds going. Birds aren't even real, man. Birds are definitely real. I eat them every other day. There's a lot of birds out there, but most birds that are targeted are either waterfowl or upland game birds. See, this is why I'm here. You didn't even mention doves and pigeons. I walk right by a billion of them every single day. Are you seriously telling me they're delicious? Bro, you have not lived until you have a fresh dove jalapeno popper, Truss. Big Truss, that sounds Obama. Pigeon poppers sound dope. I might have the boys open fire the next time I see some. You don't want just any old city pigeon. They probably eat condoms and fentanyl. You want a wild bird like the morning dove or colloquially known as the turtle dove. The wild ones are a little smaller than some of the fat ass pigeons I see walking around New York. The pigeons are probably thinking the same thing about you. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh it up, Barack. You probably never killed anything without using drones. You just watch me. I'll get a Texan buck today. So is a dove hunt any fun? It's a blast. The first week of dove season is like a Texan holiday. Everybody around here with a shotgun is out in the field shooting doves on opening day. And this is Texas. Most people have a shotgun. I'm guessing the yield isn't too good for these tiny birds. You will need to get about three birds to feed one person and you aren't getting anything other than meat. And how's the taste? They are a dark meat bird with not a lot of fat on them. So some people say they taste like a gamey duck. I don't mind the flavor at all, especially when combined with bacon to add the missing fat. With such a small amount of meat, it feels like yield should be D tier. Even a squirrel is giving you more meat than these. That's fine. Its strength is the lack of effort you need to put into the hunt. You basically just show up to a field of feed and wait for them to flock over. You can add as many hunters to your party as you want to increase your odds. Sounds like a fun gathering, but the more hunters you have around, the more accidents can happen. Depends if you have experienced hunters with you or guys like Joe. I would normally defend myself, but I nearly killed George 10 minutes ago. I tank those. It certainly helps to learn the rules of hunter safety at the range before you ever go hunting. I would say that knocks effort from S tier to A tier because you need some real experience with shotguns to do this safely. I guess so, but as long as you have basic gun safety down, it's not much more dangerous than any other hunt with multiple people. I say it stays S tier. Yeah, just don't point the barrel at anyone. How fucking hard is that? Sometimes my mind wanders, and next thing I know, I'm holding my buddies at gunpoint. Barrels should be pointed at the skies anyway, but some doves do come in low and fast, and that's where bad stuff can happen. At the end of the day, safety isn't more important than fun. I'm kind of with Joe here, hurts to say. Okay, what about sport? Shooting doves is super addicting. It's not easy to land a hit on a dove, but you get so many opportunities due to the fact that they flock up to the hundreds. I'd be at A tier. This is the arcade version of hunting. Sounds like good fun with friends and a great way to train your aim. Why not S tier on sport then? Doves are fun and all, but it's almost too easy to put them at S tier. You don't get an overwhelming sense of accomplishment bagging your limit when it took such little effort to do so. On the other hand, it's not like there aren't bad days hunting doves. There's no calling these guys in. Heard. As far as expenses, it seems a bit pricey for a 12 gauge shotgun in order to shoot small birds. It's the same shit with rabbits. You could totally kill a dove with a BB gun, but you gotta be fucking John Wick to hit that shit. So we go B tier on expenses to match the rabbits? Sounds about right. 
Yeah, but I would also mention that this is the most ammo-consuming hunt I know of. You'll go through more shotgun shells than you ever thought possible. All right, where do they land? Not far from where you shot them. <laughs> Wait, what? I think you might have skipped your pills too, Bushy Boy. I was making a dove hunting joke, but I guess it flew right over your head. <laughs> Good one, George. In your expert opinion, where do they fit on the tier list? I think they squeak into A tier, perfect for a hunting party. I'll agree with that. I never thought we would score doves that high. Very underrated for sure. Let's move on to the classic upland game birds. This would include the quail, the pheasant, grouse, and even woodcock. Giggity! Wouldn't turkey also be considered an upland game bird? Yes, but I wouldn't lump them in with the other species I just mentioned. Turkey is a whole new ball game. True that. Very different hunting styles. Have you shot some quail, you whale? Nah, I've gone, but I didn't shoot anything. I'm a better turkey hunter. What's different about these smaller game birds? You do a lot more stalking than you would for turkey. Pheasants and grouse have a minuscule home range near their favorite tree and stay there for their whole lives. You want to catch them at the edges of underbrush near their home range where they forage for food. Like most animals on the list, these birds are more active at dawn and dusk, so that's when you'll be out trying to flush them from cover, similar to the way you would hunt a rabbit. You might find rabbits the same way, but it's a whole lot tougher to land shots on upland birds since they can fly at up to 50 miles per hour. They seem pretty tough to see through the trees, let alone hit. That's part of the challenge. It's no easy task to flush a bird from the underbrush and get a shot off before they fly out of sight. That's what makes this a real hunt. I'm at S tier for sport on these. Wow, that's some high praise. What about taste? I've heard some of these are kind of grouse. Uh, there you go, Joe. Congrats, Joe. You're finally getting the hang of bird jokes. Grouse are not gross by any means. I love wild turkey, but a turkey has nothing on the taste of a pheasant or a roughed grouse. They're competing with waterfowl for the best tasting bird you can hunt. As far as volume, these birds get about as large as chickens while being much leaner due to their wild lifestyle. I've enjoyed a number of quail at fancy restaurants and they are pretty dank based on previous rankings. These delicious birds are probably B or C tier. I think we can allow a B tier even with the lack of volume. They're just too tasty to say mid. Good for me. Man, are there any downsides to these? Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass to become an upland game bird hunter. The upland birds are all semi-difficult to locate and even more difficult to hit once you do. A good bird dog is all but required on a hunt like this. Training a dog to hunt upland game birds is a lot more difficult than a simple retrieve. You really want a breed that points silently at a bedded game bird instead of the standard barking and chasing. This way you're far more prepared for the shot before they take off. Some breeds of dog are better for certain tasks. If you're just working edges, then you want a dog that flushes any game birds out by getting into the undergrowth. These dogs are usually loud and fast in order to spook the birds. On the other end are the pointers. Their job is to stay silent and locate the birds by lifting a paw up and pointing their nose at the target. Pointers help you track birds very well, while the flushing dogs help you cover lots of ground. So it depends where you're hunting for which one you'll prefer. The fact of the matter is, they're almost non-negotiable. A dogless upland bird hunter is gonna have a real tough time, unless they know some elite Native American tracking or some shit. So you gotta train a dog and be accurate on a target moving as fast as a car. Sounds like I don't have enough time in my life to pick up quail hunting. You gotta know the behavior and habitat of like four different species of game bird, geography, you gotta train a dog of a certain breed, get hours of trigger time at the gun range, shooting clay discs until you build confidence, and then you have to trudge through the thickest parts of the woods with your dog just to get a two-second look at whatever you're after. It is a metric shit ton of effort. It's seriously like D tier in that category. You usually won't even become an upland bird hunter unless you've been mentored by someone who has the knowledge and resources already, namely a good bird dog. This hunt is hard to approach, I will grant you that. But once you gain the knowledge and resources, it can be one of the most rewarding hunts you can go on. Would it be fair to say that costs would be mid, since you must obtain a dog of a certain breed on top of a fairly expensive shotgun? Yeah, that's fine. You didn't even consider gun range fees and pricey hunting camo. Also a good pair of hiking boots, since you're gonna walk like five miles uphill every time. This is sounding unreachable for me. Mid. If you say that one more time, we can have a duel like the presidents of old. Easy there, Andrew Jackson. It's fair to say that this is no easy hunt made for everyone. It's a hunt of prestige. If you're a seasoned upland game bird hunter, then I know you're a master of the craft and could pretty much hunt anything. 
having stacked up a fair amount of pheasant over my career, I'll humbly endorse that take. Now, can you endorse me for president? Don't push it. If you're done glazing, can we rank the wild chickens? I think they're so close to S tier through the sport alone, but I understand the amount of effort compared to the meat output is too high a boundary for some. So how about A tier? You're the expert on this, I'll agree. Mid. I for one enjoy the style of this type of hunt, or at least how it sounds. A great way to get a hike in while hunting. Barack is making me hate it. Bring it down to B tier with me to make George angry. Tempting, but he's a much better shot than me, and I'm not going out like that. It is unwise to disagree with Texans on their land. I'll put it up there if you promise to take me pheasant hunting. Sounds like I have a new apprentice. We'll get you on some birds in no time. Maybe we can all try our hand at it in the next part of the hunting tier list. I can already tell this won't be a one and done episode. Facts, we just got to Turkey for Christ's sake. Ah uh, yes, spring thunder. Is there a better sound than that? It's a ritual for us hunters. Turkey are like a sacred bird held close to the hearts of nearly every hunter that's gone after them. To call a turkey in is no joke, man. It never gets old. For the first time on the list, this is a species I have experience with. I've been hunting turkey since Eisenhower was in office. Damn, your ass is old. Well, your ass is old and orange. Tangerine tush. So how do we feel about sport for turkey? It's very unique compared to hunting nearly anything else. You'll almost always hear them long before you see them, and your main goal is to get them to come to you with a series of turkey calls. It's kind of like how the predator hunts people. You mimic a sexy hen until you get a male horny enough to come check you out. My turkey calls are irresistible. I'm like the ice spice of turkey calling. I already know you got your mouthpiece on you. Give us your best turkey call. Batten down your wieners, here it comes. <laughs> wow, that was kinky. You kind of sound like a slut. Excuse me? I always prefer some light calls, and I don't even always answer after every gobble. Barack is out here edging turkeys. Come on, man. I'm with Barack. You gotta play hard to get, or you'll get rejected. I try to act like the youngest and most submissive turkey in the forest. Bro, there's no fucking way. Are you the Chris Hansen of turkey hunting? You could say that, but it ends with me shooting them in the head with a shotgun. So, it feels like I'm more effective. If only that's how the real Chris Hansen did it. Ratings would go crazy. At the end of the day, there's no one way to hunt for turkey, so you'll need to adapt to your area. But the majority of turkey hunts are the result of days scouting and calling. Sometimes I even change my approach entirely and try mimicking other males trying to pick a fight. I've got a bird or two that way when hen yelps aren't drawing enough attention. It's kind of funny when you step back and think about what you're doing. You're basically just playing telephone with a bunch of weird birds. S tier for the memes. It is memes, but it's also incredibly exciting when you finally see the bird you've been talking to. I approve of the S tier. Same here, getting a gobbler is a very satisfying feeling, especially when you realize how strange and beautiful these birds look up close. Most people think these things are just grayish or black, but the feathers have this iridescence to them that you can only really see when you get your hands on them. Now about yield. I've had some good turkey dinners with wild turkey. Wild turkey is a little more gamey than domestic turkey, which can throw some people off, but it depends on location and diet. There's still a thousand ways to prepare a turkey and all of them are pretty good. Turkey are certainly larger than any other bird on the list, plus you can get some cool feathers out of it. I'm gonna say B tier on yield. Facts, turkey are also a lot better than other upland birds for effort. You don't have to aimlessly wander around looking for birds. Instead, you can let the gobbles lead you to turkey and then ambush them in a clearing. Most times, I just pick a nice spot to sit down and do my calls so they all come to me. No way you don't fall asleep just sitting around all these nature sounds. I'll take little naps here and there throughout the day. Only problem is when I accidentally sleep too long and I find myself alone in the woods at night. Spooky. How the hell do you get home? The presidential rescue team can find me anywhere. How many people are on this rescue team? It's really just Jill and Commander. They're a pretty good team. All right, well, if Sleepy can split time napping while hunting for turkey, it must not require a lot of effort. True, the most effort spent in the pursuit of turkey is just making sure your calls are believable and your shot placement is good at the range. Not the easiest hunt ever, but pretty casual. A tier on effort? Seems legit, and what about expenses? It's kind of up to the person hunting. At the low end, you can get the job done with a bow or a crossbow, some camo, and some dirt cheap turkey calls. At the higher end, you can get that 12 or 20 gauge shotgun and maybe add a decoy into the mix. Do yourself a favor and get the shotgun. Either way, it's pretty inexpensive. No need to get a hunting dog or anything special. Just get good at calling and you can hunt turkey. So probably A tier on expenses? That's about right. It's not like turkey calls are more than a couple pieces of wood. Final verdict? S tier. 
An American classic and the baseball of hunting. There are better hunts in my book, but turkey is easily the most attainable hunt besides maybe squirrels. It's also another hunt you can do with a friend. I wholeheartedly agree. Turkey are a must if you want to really get into hunting, but you're not sure where to start. S tier is great. I'm glad we can all agree for once. Hunting is the great unifier. It's real tough to be negative when you're out enjoying nature and killing things with the boys. You said it. Are we on to waterfowl? That's right, George. Ducks and goose are next. A good old duck hunt is perfect for a Saturday on the water with your buddies. Well, since we have the knowledge from all the other major bird hunts, it should be easy to compare them to duck hunting. Let's start with what everyone knows. Duck is delicious. Facts. For the most part, ducks and geese especially are not so small that one wouldn't satisfy one person. The quality of the meat is exceptional no matter what species you end up shooting. You also must render all the duck fat you can because that shit is like gold. Anything cooked in duck fat instantly becomes gourmet. Roasted veggies or potatoes fried in duck fat is better than any drugs Joe has ever taken. I don't know, man. The stuff they got me on now is pretty dank. I, I literally caught the dragon. I think we can put waterfowl a tier above turkey for yield because the meat is arguably better and the rendered fat is the best cooking oil out there. Yeah, you're not really using turkey fat for anything besides gravy. Turkey are like three times the size of ducks, though. Yeah, but if you're counting geese, then the size difference isn't really that much. I can go with the A tier on yield. Sure. As far as sport goes, what do we think? I mean, it's pretty much just like dove hunting, but instead of a field, it's a lake or a river which also means you can go fishing whenever there aren't ducks around. It's also kind of like turkey hunting, since you can call a flock of ducks in. Want to hear my duck call? Not really. Quack, quack. Seriously? No, I'm just playing. I left my duck call at home. I like to think of duck hunting as a lot of work to set up in the early morning hours, but no work when it comes time to actually do the hunting. Build it and they will come. And when they do come, it's usually more than a few. It is a great feeling to see a flock of ducks headed your way, and then opening fire with your whole party. Sounds like it's another S tier for sport. As far as effort, it's kind of mixed. It's a lot of work to get up before dawn and get out into the water to put decoy ducks everywhere and set up a hide. It's kind of fun to set up your little decoy duck army around your hide. On the other hand, it's not like you're moving a whole lot at all after setup, especially when you have a dog getting all the ducks for you. Plus, it's not a huge effort to train a dog to retrieve ducks. If they can swim and no drop it, they're halfway there. I think you're too used to teaching dogs how to hunt for quail when you say that. It's not a walk in the park to teach them to swim out and retrieve ducks. You gotta get them used to gunfire and make sure they're quiet, even if a bunch of ducks show up. Maybe you're right, but it's not enough effort that I'd rather walk through mud or canoe out to get every single duck I shoot. I think ducks are B tier on effort. It's not that hard once you get used to it or have a dog trained. Agreed. Expenses are really the downside of hunting for waterfowl, an outlandish initial price tag. Oh yeah, you gotta get a good shotgun, waders, camo, duck calls, a hide, at least 12 decoys, and a ton of ammunition at a minimum. As you get deeper into it, you'll want all sorts of other accessories too. Even a small boat or canoe can help when you have like 20 decoys to put out. I've seen guys with like 60 decoys, they could barely fit them all in the truck. I like to put all mine on a line so you can just go around once to spread them out and you can pull them all in when you're done. Things like that can really help the cleanup, but definitely not the price tag. Could be a D or F tier on this one. Yeah, go ahead with D tier on expenses. The only saving grace is there's tons of different species of waterfowl everywhere in the US, so you probably won't need to travel much. Definitely research the rules and regulations for waterfowl in your area. Some species are protected, but those green-headed mallards are fair game most anywhere. Those taste the best, too. All right, where do we think they go? South for the winter. Stop it. I already know these are high tier. Do they make S tier? I think they make S tier for the best multi-hunter target out there. You just can't get the same success for a group of hunters targeting anything else. Yeah, that's true. You gotta debate who gets the opportunity to take the shot when it's a single animal. Speak of the devil, I got a bucket 100 yards. Oh shit, where is it? Just down there in front of the dead wood. Oh shit, I see it. What's it, another whitetail? No nah, man, that's an axis buck. A good size one too. We got him broadside, who's taking the shot? I want him! Don't be greedy, Donnie. You've already pulled three bucks out of here. Oh, fine. It can be a liberal deer. You want it, Joe? Now, I wouldn't want to be associated with Nazis. Wait, what? They aren't Axis power deer. These are Indian deer. Tiger food. Bro, it's 2024. You're supposed to say Native American deer. Dot not feather, Barack. Take the shot before he hears us. I got him.
Well, howdy, y'all. It looks like you made it to the end of the video. You'll have to tune in next week to see if Barack made the shot and see us rank deer in all types of big game. Until then, drop a comment for how you like the rankings or trade hunting stories from when you targeted one of these species. Bye, folks.